How you doing, everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. So uh, this week's catch up. Ah, well, been busy here, uh, but one of the good things is uh, we got some rain. Uh, the last uh, day and a half, we got 3.3 uh, inches of rain right here, according to our gauge. So that's a lot of rain. Uh, we haven't had this kind of rain in a long time. Kind of forgot what it sounded like on the roof, uh, actually, what, when it's raining. So we haven't met a roof on the house, so uh, they're a little, it's a little noisier than a regular roof. So Anyway, it's a great thing. It's soaking wet out there. Well, before the rain came uh, over the weekend, we were uh, doing a lot of logging. Uh, there was, uh, let's see, three, four of us. Uh, a, a logger friend uh, came over and dropped a whole pile of trees uh, for us, uh, so we didn't have to do it. They're close to the house, and he's really good. So we, uh, not our house, uh, my neighbor's house. So my 97-year-old neighbor, he just turned 97 yesterday. But uh, so uh, my two uh, two other neighbors and the 97-year-old uh, <laughs> uh, Jack, he we were all out there. And uh, we used, of course, a dozer, my tractor, and uh, chainsaws, and we limbed, uh, limbed the trees and, and cut them to lengths uh, and drug them into a big pile. So we got two big piles going, and we still have got, well, oh, probably another 15, 20 logs to drag and get cleaned up. Uh, but we got. We got a lot, it was a lot, awful lot, a lot of hard work. And uh, the funny thing about it was I was the young guy. <laughs> I was the youngest one out there. So. Uh, it was kind of funny. But we, uh, we got a lot done and a lot cleaned up before the rain. Uh, we're talking big trees, you know, 120 foot trees, uh, three and four foot bases on some of them. So most, most trees were over two, two and a half foot bases so they're a lot of big trees anyway uh, this uh, catch up so uh, what we got there we got um, I got an eBay purchase uh, I picked up another scraper on eBay uh, somebody noticed my calculator in the background so I do a little quick thing on the my show you my calculator and uh, a little x-carve uh, action just a quickie uh, put some finishing touches on the uh, micrometer box uh, showed in the previous video. So, uh, what else? I got a got a little, little envelope I need to send off to uh, Jim Bollinger. Uh, stick that in the mail today, and uh, did a little bit of a engraving uh, stuff for him. Uh, a little, these are actually these are just samples, so we we might do something for him, and. Uh, so uh, Jim Bollinger, he has a channel, Do Right Fabrication. Uh, Jim, he's in down in Florida. I'll put his link up, of course, and uh, is on his YouTube channel. He's a welder, uh, but he does other stuff too. And check him out. Check Jim out. Uh, he's uh, well, he's kind of affiliated in a way. He work does some work for Lincoln Electric. He doesn't work for Lincoln Electric, but he does stuff. For him, like teaching classes on welding and things like that, and seminars. Uh, for if you're a fly, if you're a pilot, you've heard of uh, Oshkosh and uh, Son of the Fun, uh, big the two biggest fly-ins in our country in the U.S. And he he does seminars at those places. So uh, anyway, so I'm going to be sending them some of the some things here, uh, working with him on. And uh, here's a project I'm going to try to get. Done here this week. Uh, this is a brass cap uh, for a. Grab it. For a, a older fly rod tube. Now uh, this is a fly rod tube with brass caps, brass ends, threaded. Brass cap. These are pretty nice. They're aluminum tube with the brass caps on them. Uh, I have one other fly rod that has one like this. A lot of a lot of better rods used to come in these uh, over the, over the years and you don't see too many of these type anymore uh, but this one's missing the cap uh, this was given to me uh, 
or it came came to me uh, when my one of my fishing partners passed away. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna make a so I'm gonna make a nice cap for it, and uh, we'll, I'll show you that. Uh, now this is an oddball. This is a 20, 20, 20 TPI thread, uh, pitch wise, but it's an on odd diameter. Uh, nothing standard about it. So uh, as far as the unless other than the twenty TPI. So we'll, I'll show you how we, we figure out what how uh, deep to cut the threads, uh, what's the um, diameters to, to bore out the cap to, and things like that. I'll show you all that. So, and I, got, I made a drawing up already. So, so uh, there you go. That's for the catch up this week. Like I said, I've been really busy, but then the rain came, so uh, we don't have to do so much logging right now. Uh, <laughs> we'll get you back on it as soon as it clears up here in the next day or two. But, uh, plus I've got one, I can just count, just looking here, I've got one, two, three, four other projects I'm working on <laughs> That's all at the same time. So, uh, since Christmas is coming and um, one gift I have to finish before Thanksgiving, I have to deliver it then, uh, which is a Christmas gift for a cousin and things like that. So I'm really, really busy trying to get some of this stuff done and try to get a lot of oddball projects out of the way. You know, not oddball, but uh, little projects that I just need to get caught up on it so I can do some more major stuff. So thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks for watching. We're almost at 6,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers and everybody who watches. Uh, thank you for sharing my videos and, and uh, just uh, sticking with them a little bit. Uh, I do appreciate it great deal uh, I also passed half a million views uh, for the total number of views of my videos so things are good things are good it's fun uh, I, I enjoy it still uh, so I will definitely keep going uh, and uh, just thanks for everything somebody's driving in so uh, that's my son so I'm gonna sign off and uh, enjoy the video thanks I made a, another eBay purchase. So before I showed you this, this is a scraper I picked up. I picked this up on eBay also. It's the Sandvik one, 620-20, and uh, with carbide inserts. So now I picked up, I was going to pick up another one. This one's a little bit older. This is an Anderson, Anderson Brothers. Rockville, Rockford, in Illinois, and uh, nice wooden handle. It's obviously fairly old. So I'm going to engrave tool room it, engrave tool room in it, and uh, we'll show you a little closer here. It's a little bit closer. Uh, like I said, nice wooden handle. Let's see if we can make that out. Anderson brother, and then uh, has a part number. Uh, I saw it somewhere. Oh, right here. Right here on the end. Look, well, actually, it looks like it says N05, maybe, or it says number 5 20. And it looks like a, I don't know, it looks the, the cutting edge that's on here looks like a worn down carbide brazed onto steel type uh, edge. So I have to. I'll be looking into seeing what I can find uh, for there. If anybody has information, uh, I'll uh, probably have to email Gary there. He'll he'll know uh, about these things. Since I'm just kind of trying to acquire some tools so I can uh, learn how to scrape. So now I have a couple scrapers. So now that I have a couple scrapers, I'm gonna. I, have to, I mean, I have surface plate, a big surface plate and a small surface plate, and I have a squareness block, um, a square block now, you know, granite one. And uh, I need to find a tense indicator, a test indicator, and 
uh, some way to sharpen and grind the the tools, uh, lap them, whether I'm going to build my own or what there. But I do have some motors, so that's a very distinct possibility. Uh, so, so I'll slowly uh, work on this. Uh, and uh, I need to find a, a good straight edge that I'll either scrape to being flat, um, maybe a 18 inch one or something like that. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, but I'm going to start with some small projects first. So I have a couple in mind and we'll uh, be uh, trying to get some materials and do some machining to get them to a scraping point. You know, just something to learn and start with. So those are my two so far. So I have a calculator. Uh, a couple of people have uh, actually made their comments. They saw it in the background. Here, I'm going to dust it off a little bit. It's kind of dusty. There you go. I use this thing all the time. I love it. Uh, this is an HP uh, 55. If you can see that. Uh, I bought this brand new uh, when I was in college, uh, like in 1976 or 7, 76, 77. I, I mean, and I haven't looked up when these were really made, so but I know it was right around there. They were fairly, fairly new on the market then. Now it's, it's a programmable one. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, this HP 65 took a little card. Uh, so you could actually keep your program, but this one had has no card. It's just a built-in memory. So if you turn when you turn it off, you lose your program. And I think it's a 50-step program you can do. Uh, and it's a reverse Polish notation. Let's see here. We'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, this is uh, it's in really good shape. I mean, I've taken good care of it. Uh, and it still works. And, but now the battery has long since gone bad. It takes a three AA NICADs uh, that go in there. And I've, I've never sat down to build a new pack, uh, which I could do. Uh, but anyway, I just use the charger. And we'll plug it in. There we go. Nice little red LEDs. Oh, yeah. And you can change the... You can uh, set how many decimal places you want it to be. Let's see here. You know, eight. It will do scientific notation. Um, oh, let's see here. Oh, uh, let's see. Anyway, uh, you you can you can set do it in scientific notation if you want. Um, but it does all the good function. It does some conversions, uh, you know, inch to inch to millimeters, and it's back and forth, feet and meters, gallon liters, pounds force and kilograms, or pounds mass and kilograms, pounds force and newtons, Fahrenheit centigrade, joules and BTUs, uh, hours to hours, minutes and seconds, and um, uh, what's dr? Oh uh, boy. Rectangular and polar notation, and uh, well, memory's failing me a little bit, but uh, it does a, it's a pretty cool old, old calculator, and it runs programs. And uh, but like I said, it operates in the reverse Polish notation, so it's a little different way of uh, entering uh, calculations if you if you don't if you aren't familiar with that. Um, uh, instead of saying uh, you know on a regular calc, most of them it's two plus four. And you you have to hit equals. Here it'd be two enter two times, and it's the answer is four, right? So uh, it, it just works a little bit, little different functions there. And it has all your log they can and uh, sine cosine tangent, all, all that stuff. Uh, so anyway, pretty cool. Uh, thanks a lot for people noticing sitting it there, and and uh, like I said, I love this thing. <laughs> Yeah, it actually works really well and and everything. All right, thanks a lot, you guys.
little Danish oil on here. Just kind of work it in there. Seal it up. It came out really, really nice. That's 30 thousandths deep with a 1 16th end mill. Came out primo. Okay, I'm just taking a mechanical pencil here. That's fairly soft lead in it, but so it colors nicely. Yeah, that makes it stand out. That looks good. That's just with a pencil. There we go. And that's a finished micrometer box.